Sige, tingnan mo na. Ano ka, live stream na tayo? <laughs> okay, sige. <laughs> Naka live stream na. Okay. Thank you, thank you. <laughs> Dandy, rinig ako. Dandy. Yes, Doc. Dinig, dinig na dinig po. Rinig malinaw. Po. Malinaw po, malinaw. Mambambi, rinig ako. Hello, mic test. Mic test. Hindi ako rinig. Sir, rinig po kayo. Malinaw na malinaw. Rinig po. Hindi ko rin sila rinig. Bakit na nun? Mike. Hello, Mike. Hello. Sige, go. Maka yung CTC. Sana yung CTC.
Bawat umagay may hamon Sa moderno panahon Kaya't subukin ang sarili Animal science ang kakampi
Bawat umaga ay may hamon Sa moderno panahon Kaya't subukin ang sarili Animal science ang kakampi
morning, good morning, good morning. Welcome po once again to the Aggie Peace Talk Pagkain at Pangkabuhayan sa Panahon ng Pandemia. Good morning to all of our viewers on Facebook Live, on YouTube, and of course to all participants watching on Zoom. And today we will be learning how to make kesong puti. At matututunan naman po tayong bangwa ng isang tatak Pilipino na produkto. Masustansya na tatak Pilipino pa. Ngunit bago po tayo magpatuloy, mayroon lamang po tayo mga ilang paalala. Una, kailangan na nakamute ang ating microphone sa lahat ng oras. Ito po ay para maiwasan ang mga kagit-lagit lang mga sounds na pwedeng makadistract sa atin dito. Pangalawa, kung tayo po ay may katanungan for Zoom users, gamitin po natin ang Q&A box. Para po sa mga Facebook and YouTube viewers, I-type niyo lang po ang inyong mga tanong sa comment section. Our resource person will answer your questions during the question and answer portion. And pangatlo, we will be giving a certificate of attendance para po sa mga sasagot ng evaluation and post-test form. And for those who pre-registered for this webinar, make sure lang po na masasagutan ninyo mamaya ang post-test. Ito po ang aming magiging basis para sa inyong certificate of participation. So for those watching on Zoom, please find the link at the chat box bago po matapos ang webinar. And those watching on Facebook and YouTube, pwede niyo po kami i-email for the evaluation and post-test link. So, start na po tayo. Before we introduce our resource person, mapalad po tayo lahat that we have here with us the ever supportive at guwapong-guwapong dekano ng UPLB College of Agriculture and Food Science. Ladies and gentlemen, a virtual round of applause for Dr. Elkijo M. Agvisit, Jr. Hi, Mel. Thank you very much. Uh, do you hear me? Narinig yes. ba ako? Okay, thank you. To all our participants for our ninth session of our first series of Aggie's Peace Talks, Pagkain at Pangkabuhayan sa Panahon ng Pandemia, in behalf of the college that cares and serves the Filipino people, a pleasant and blessed morning to everyone. Thank you for continuously joining us for the past three weeks. We started this series with the basis of agriculture, which is the soil. We discussed different production enterprises and factors affecting productivity. And now we will start sharing food on the table, completing the farm to fork or from the land to our plate paradigm and courses in the college offered by the Dairy Training and Research Institute spearheaded by its hard-working director, Dr. Amado A. Angeles. Aside from something you could eat, we want to offer you a course that you could also be a source of livelihood to you, especially now that this pandemic is still ongoing. White cheese or queso puti is a popular soft unripened cheese here in Southern Tagalog. It has a soft texture and tastes slightly salty. A little trivia about queso puti. Sinong national hero ang may favorite sa queso puti? Clue? It was well documented that he regularly requested his mother to send him queso puti, puti while he was incarcerated in the pitan. Ayan, tama po kayo. Our national heroes, Dr. Jose P. P. Rizal, ay favorite po niya ang queso puti. Moreover, aside from being just a stuffing to our pandesal, palaman po sa ating pandesal with hot coffee and hot chocolate, it could be used in variety of dishes such as in salads and different rice cakes. I hope after today's session, you can make your own white cheese to serve in your home and hopefully for selling in the future to contribute to your income. Learning the basics could help you develop the product further. Who knows? Maybe one of you could be the next king or queen of cheese. I know you will enjoy the webinar because your trainer for this morning is such a jolly, knowledgeable, and approachable person. Again, thank you for your time and effort in joining us. May you and your family remain safe and healthy. Good morning at mabuhay po tayong lahat. Mel? Thank you po, Doc Feeds. Uh, opening remarks pa lang, pero napakalaman na. Ano po? 
So now let me introduce to you our resource person. Our resource person is a deputy director and head of the Dairy Technology, Technology Division of the Dairy Training and Research Institute. He is also a faculty member at the UPLB Institute of Animal Science. Marami na po siyang experience sa pag-formulate ng dairy products. And most of all, single pa po ang guapo nating resource person. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome our resource person, Professor Angelo Tapia. Magandang magandang umaga po. Good morning everyone. Sa ating dekano, Dr. Agbisit. Good morning, sir. At sa director po ng D3, Dr. Angeles, good morning po. At sa lahat po ng dumalo sa sesyong ito, uh, maraming salamat, magandang umaga sa inyong interes na malaman kung paano gumawa ng kesong puti. Karaniwang gawa mula sa gatas ng kalabawang kesong puti ng panahon ng Kastila. Hanggang sa pagdaan ng panahon, sa pagkakaroon ng ibang mapagkukunan ng gatas, naging popular na rin ang kesong puti gamit ang gatas ng baka o kambing. Maging sa paraan ng paggawa ay nagkakaroon ng pagkakaiba-iba ang bawat rehiyon mula sa mga nakagisnan o lumang pamamaraan hanggang sa paggamit ng mga bagong teknolohiya. Now generally, uh, your cheese is a concentrated protein. Now on the average, for a soft type of cheese, you can have about 150 grams to 200 grams of cheese per liter of milk. Now why do we make cheese? First, we do it for preservation. Thus, we remove part of the moisture, which is the whey, and eventually we put some salt. Sabi ni din kanina, ang kesong puti ay medyo may kaalatan. So we do it for further preservation. Second, for those who have a lot of supply of milk, they convert liquid milk into curds or coagulum. Again, by removing the moisture or whey as much as 50%, Instead of storing a highly perishable liquid milk, you turn it into curds, which has reduced weight and volume, which can conveniently be stored. And lastly, uh, masarap ang keso. So eventually, it became part of the human diet. Now, there are two main methods on concentrating protein. One is enzymatic, or paggamit ng enzyme. And the other one is by using an acid. Ang paraan ng kesong puti na makikita nyo mamaya ay gagamitan natin ng enzymatic method o gagamitan natin ng rennet. Samantalang ang traditional method ay gumagamit ng acid pangkaraniwan na ang suka. Now in terms of storage, normally your kesong puti can be stored up to 14 days at refrigerated temperature. Some would still extend to 21 to 28, but normally uh, the shelf life of kesong puti is at 14 days. Sa ikasyam na sesyon ng Agi Peace Stock, ating tunghayan ang paggawa ng kesong puti. Good morning. This is now your procedure for kesong puti. Materials you will be needing, you have 5 liters of raw milk, you have a rennet, you have 150 grams of salt, which you could adjust based on your preference. You will also be needing a strainer with a cheesecloth, a ladle, and a thermometer. For the procedure, first, you have to mix your salt with your raw milk. So you have five liters of raw milk, and then you mix your 150 grams of salt. You mix it thoroughly until you feel that all your salt has been dissolved. Now, after dissolving your salt in your raw milk, you will now strain the mixture of your milk together with the salt. Then after this one, we will now heat your milk together with your salt until 75 degrees Celsius. Uh, 
After heating your milk to 75 degrees Celsius, the next thing you do is to cool your milk to around 35 degrees Celsius. The next thing that we have to do is to add your rennet. So here's our rennet. Now you can find rennet in different forms uh, commercially, but what we're using now is a powdered rennet. Include inclusion of which is around 3 grams per 100 liters. So we are using 5 liters of milk. We will be needing around 0.15 grams of rennet powder. So after you have your rennet, you get ample amount of water to dissolve your rennet. You just dissolve your rennet. And then after which, you add it into your milk. You mix it thoroughly and then we will allow this to coagulate for around 30 to 40 minutes. After coagulation time of 30 minutes, you will have a soft mass of curd and we will be ready to cut the coagulum. So here's your soft mass of curd which is just like the hot and this will be ready for cutting. So you have to cut your coagulum crisscross. Cutting your coagulum allows the whey to be removed from the curd. After cutting, we will just allow this to rest for 10 minutes. After resting for 10 minutes, you slowly mix your curd. Slowly mix your curd and turn your curds up. You do this for 30 minutes with an interval of 10 minutes. After mixing for 30 minutes, slowly mixing for 30 minutes with an interval of 10 minutes, you will find uh, your whey here, which is the water part. Whey now is your byproduct after making cheese. So we have to remove one third part of the whey coming from the coagulum. Removing the whey from the coagulum, we are now ready to scoop the coagulum from your molder. What you need now is a perforated tray, a piece of cheesecloth in which you will line it on your perforated trays, and then you get your coagulum or scoop your coagulum and then put it into your molds. all the coagulum into your molds. This is now the process of draining your white cheese. You just cover your white cheese with the cheesecloth and you just allow it to drain overnight on the refrigerator. After overnight draining, you will now have your quesong putty after. Thank you. Napakalinaw po ng demonstration po natin. And um, now the question and answer portion is now open. So kung may mga questions po kayo, pakitype lang po sa Q&A box or um, sa comment section po sa YouTube or sa Facebook.
questions? Okay, the first question. Sir Angelo, are you ready? Are there other alternatives for Renet? Okay po. Alternatives for Renet, as what I've said earlier, uh, dalawa lang naman po ang pwedeng pamilian para makonsentrate ng protein. It's either use an enzyme or the other one is to use an acid. For the Renet, uh, marami siyang form. It's either a microbial Renet, an enzyme, or a plant uh, enzyme. Uh, marami po sa market na pwedeng gamitin. Um, marami rin pong mabibili uh, in different forms. Ang kailangan nyo pong tandaan kung bibili kayo ng Renet or kung nabili nyo na siya, kailangan nyo pong malaman yung inclusion rate or kung gaano kadaming Renet ang dapat gamitin sa bawat litro ng gatas. Kasi dapat meron siyang rekomendasyon. Ang lumang paraan uh, na ginagamit ang enzyme ay ibababad ang abumasum yung bahay asin ng baka, ibababad siya sa suka at least overnight. Pagkatapos yung extract ay gagawin siyang renet. Pero siguraduhin nyo po kung yun ang gagamitin yung method, uh, siguraduhin nyo na hindi napainitan yung abumasum. Kailangan siya ay hilaw na hilaw. So you, you extract the enzyme from the abumasum or it's either you buy an extracted enzyme. UPLB Biotech has an available uh, Renet, uh, which is a microbial one. Yeah, so, nasagot na rin po yung questions. May dalawang questions po dito kung saan makakabili po ng Renet. Ano po? So, okay. saan nga po yun? Saan? Marami naman pong available sa, sa market. Uh, even online, may nag-o-offer ng, ng Renet. So, again, ang reminder ko po ay you have to know the inclusion rate which is optimum per liter of milk to make queso. Okay po, thank you Sir Angelo. Another question. Ano po ang nagiging dahilan ng pagpait at pagtutubig ng kesong puti? Ang karaniwang sanhi ng pagpait ng kesong puti, una ay kailangan nyo munang i-evaluate yung gatas. Kailangan nyo gagamitin yung gatas ay fresh talaga yung, yung, yung lasa yung quality ay maganda. Pangalawa, kung masyadong maraming renet ang nagamit, may tendency din po na pumait yung kesong puti. Ang pagtutubig naman ng kesong puti ay depende kung gaano nyo kabilis o katagal ginawa yung draining period. Kung masyadong mabilis ang draining period, asahan nyo po pag ipinak nyo na siya, magkakameron pa rin ng whey. Pero normal lang po sa isang kesong puti na kahit nakapak na siya, ay meron pa rin pong lumalabas na whey. So depende po sa texture na gusto nyong ma-achieve after the process, o depende din sa timbang, pero asahan nyo na po kung hindi na-drain ng ayos ang kesong puti, magkakameron pa rin po ng whey after. Um, are you willing to answer that, Sir Angelo? I'm sorry, nakamit ka kanina. <laughs> Powdered milk daw po ba plus vinegar? Nagpo-produce talaga ng cream cheese. Siguro a, a short answer. Um, pwede pa man po, pero we, I, I'm really using raw milk, yung gatas na liquid na galing sa dede ng kahit anong hayop. Baka kanabaw kambeng. Pero for the powdered milk, uh, technically pwede, pero ang downside ay yung texture niya after. That's for the cream cheese. Um, kung gagamit kayo ng powder, dasahan nyo na po, uh, medyo magiging gritty yung texture. Lalo na for cream cheese, even for kesong puti. Lalo na for cream cheese, um, hindi ganong ka-smooth ang texture niya. Pero I do not recommend using powdered Seldom you could get coagulum when you use a powdered milk. And then you just add water. The best material you can use in making cheese is the raw milk, yung hilaw na gatas. Okay, thank you po. And how many, how much salt again daw po? Salt may vary. Uh, you could start with 2%. Eventually, that could reach as much as 3.5%. 
again, it would depend on the sensory or your preference. Kung may customer ka na ayaw medyo kaalatan yung keso, ibaba niyo po yung salt. Iba naman ay gusto talaga may kaalatan din yung keso. So itataas ko po yung salt content niya. Pero yung kanina po, ang nilagay po natin ay... Around 2.5%. Another question. Good morning po, sir. What is the purpose of rennet? Nang nag-process po kasi kami dati sa major namin ng kesong puti, hindi po kami gumamit ng rennet. Thanks. Okay po. Hindi ka masadyante yan na. <laughs> um, ulit, dalawang klase ang paggawa ng keso. Um, ang, ang keso kasi ay protina, pinagdikit-dikit na protina. So unang-una, nung nasa gata siya, kailangan kong sirain ng protina. So may dalawang pwedeng gamitin para sirain ng protina, gumamit ka ng enzyme, yun yung rennet, o kaya gumamit ka ng acid. Pwede din naman gumamit ng suka. Hindi ko lang sure, siguro pwede niyo pong banggitin kung anong ginamit yung material. Pero ang rennet kasi ay marami ding form at katawagan. So pwedeng enzyme din siya. Hindi lang siguro rennet ang, ang tawag sa kanya that time. Pero when you use an acid, you can also make cheese. Pero I do not expect that the quality of your cheese when you make use of an enzyme is just the same when you use an acid. In terms of yield and sensory properties, I would recommend using the rennet instead of an acid method. Thank you. Okay, thank you. How to maximize the way from beans to uso? Ah, yung way po. Um, sa ibang bansa ginagamit ang way paggawa ng cottage cheese. Pero dito po kasi when you make cottage cheese, naman you heat the milk uh, to a boiling temperature around 90-95. And then you add an acid. Uh, the problem here is the cost that would incur if you use the way to get the cottage cheese. Medyo may kamahalan na siya. Kasi mahal po sa atin ang gasolin, ang, ang gasol o kaya kuryente. Kaya by product na siya. Pero mostly, uh, pwede naman siyang ibigay sa alagang hayop. Uh, lalo na po sa baboy. Pwede siyang ipakain. Thank you po. Another one, may pagkakaiba po ba ang kalidad ng kesong puti kung magmumula po ang grad sa kambing o kalabaw? Imagine na. <laughs> okay. Meron po. Unang-una, kung ibang materyales ang ginamit o ibang gatas, asahan nyo po, pag ginawa nyo siyang keso, iba din yung kalidad na lalabas. Kung ang ginamit nyo ay kambing, at talagang maanggo yung gatas ng kambing na ginamit para sa keso, lalabas din yung anggo doon sa, sa keso. Or gatas na ginamit, kambing ng gatas na ginawang keso, lalabas din ang anggo niya pag naging keso na siya. Ganon din po sa kalabaw. Kung amoy kalabaw yung gatas, lalabas din siya pag naging keso na siya. Ang malaking pagkakaiba po ng dalawa, mas makrema po kasi ang gatas ng kalabaw. Doble ang taba ng kalabaw. Kaya sa iba, mas masarap ang kesong puti gamit ang gatas ng kalabaw. Kasi ang gatas po ng kalabaw ay pwedeng magkaroon ng taba na 6 to 8%. Ang kambing at baka ay mayroong 3 to 4%. So doblado po yung taba. Pag ginawa ko siyang keso, doblado din yung taba ng keso, mas makrema yung lasa pag galing sa kalabaw. Okay, thank you. Another one from an anonymous attendee. Posible po bang patagalin pa lalo ang preservation ng white cheese for more than two weeks? Um, normally, it's two weeks. Kasi when we set now the shelf life, of course, we are still on the safe side. But still, it could stand for 21 days. Pero we do not declare 21. We just declare 14. Some processors can declare a shelf life of even a month. So that depends on the processing. Now, when you now determine the shelf life of your product, you also have to evaluate your own. You have to have your retained samples. Kasi ang, ang shelf life ay depende kung paano siya ginawa. Unang-una, anong proseso ang ginawa niyo dun sa keso, you evaluate your own product. When you have your retained samples, you evaluate your retained samples, you look at it at 14 days, 21 days, or even 28 days. 
Now, from your own evaluation, you could say, uh, gano pwedeng tumagal yung keso na ginagawa ko? If you are sure that your cheese could last for 28 days, you do not declare 28, you declare 21 or even 25. Basta hindi po sakto dun sa araw na napanis na siya. Pero on a commercial one, uh, we just use 14 days. Para mas safe then, um, for the packaging, you could use vacuum packaging to avoid contamination. Okay, thank you, Sir Amado. I guess the next questions were already answered kung saan nabibili ang rennet dito sa LB at ilang days ang tatagal ng keso ng puti. That was some 14 days, right? And um, next question from Jen. Sorry. Uh, UPLB Biotech, mga hindi lang nakuha, ma'am, kanina. Okay. Biotech UPLB, may available po silang rennet. Thank you, po, sir. Karamihan ng questions ay about that one. Uh, next po. What milk is most advisable? Fresh milk? Oh, some okay. fresh milk to. From carabao or cow? Yan. Ano daw pa po ang pinaka-advisable? Cow or carabao na milk? Kung gagamitin pong kesong puti, uh, depende po sa inyong target, depende sa inyong objective, depende ulit sa target consumers. There are consumers who would want to have just a fresh taste of milk. Ayaw naman nila nung lasang kalabaw. May iba naman consumer ang gusto ay naglalasang kalabaw siya o naglalasang kambing. So, in, in, terms of, uh, in terms of composition, uh, technicalities onto the suitability of each milk, na pwedeng gawin keso, lahat sila ay pwedeng gawin keso. So, depende na lang kung anong tinatarget niyong consumer at kung ano ang, ang inyong objective, which one would you prefer to sell in the market? Salamat po, Sir Angelo. Another question here from Harianti Devi. Can I use other material to substitute rennet? Sigu uh, siguro particular sa lemon and other acid sources. Yes po. Anything which is acidic can be used as an alternative for rennet. There are types of cheeses na talagang acid ang ginagamit. Uh, but we do not call it a kesong pute. We call it a cottage cheese. If you would want to impart that lemony flavor, it is acidic. Yes, you could still gather the curds after. Thank you. From Guadalupe Arienda, anong klaseng cheese po ang kesong puti? <laughs> Ito po ba ay ripe or unripe? <laughs> may, may premium ba pag na-perfect yung post-test? <laughs> <laughs> Ang kaso natin po, it, it's a white soft cheese. It is unripened. Uh, para po ma-distinguish nyo ang keso na ripened or hindi, uh, pag medyo patigas na yung texture ng keso, uh, ripened na siya. A uh, very good example of your ripened cheese is a queso de bola. So ang queso de bola, kung legit na queso de bola sa ang texture niya ay semi-hard na ang kanyang uh, classification. Itaas pa natin ang classification na medyo matigas, cheddar. At meron ka pang pinakamatigas na queso, which is the parmesan. So sila yung mga tipo or linyahan ng queso na ripened. Ripened kasi kailangan siyang... Um, Ang simple term, kailangan siyang buruhin. Ang keso de bola ay around 2 to 3 months. Your cheddar is 6 months. Parmesan is 1 year. So those are the types of ripen. Pag medyo patigas na yung texture ng keso, uh, more or less ripen siya. Pero for the soft, uh, fresh cheeses, most of them are the unripened ones. Okay, thank you. Sir Angelo, ano pong package ang i-advise nyo na gagamitin para sa kesong puti? I really would recommend a vacuum packaging. Especially, um, magkakameron pa rin talaga ng whey. Even after you drain it overnight, may tendency pa rin na may matirang whey. So para hindi magmukhang messy ang inyong packaging, um, you can have, uh, you could vacuum pack your kesong pute. Pero ang iba ginagamit, uh, gusto pa rin yung traditional na may dahon ng saging. Pwede naman po to impart such flavor. Just make sure uh, malinis na malinis ang dahon ng saging pag ginagamit niyo for packaging. 
Pero I think this is a follow-up question. Pero ano po ba dapat ang tamang packaging base sa inyong experience? Wala naman pong tamang uh, packaging. Kasi mayroong nagbebenta, binabalot lang ng cling wrap. May nagbebenta ay nasa microwavable ovens. May naka-vacuum pack. It all depends on your presentation. But of course, if you're considering the packaging, uh, the better it looks, the more it expensive it would be. So kung ano man po ang gagamitin yung packaging, uh, you have to think na maganda siya at uh, hindi magkukos ng contamination dun sa product para tumagal or ma-achieve yung tamang shelf life niya. Okay, salamat po. From Rita Makabuhay, can fresh milk, I think processed already by farmer co-ops, be used for quesong puti? Pero yung processed milk na paano? Apa, feeling ko po ito ay mga nabibili na na fresh milk. Um, medyo maselan po ang keso, uh, lalo na sa init na ginawa sa kanya. Siguro po kung bibili kayo, pwede nyo namang tanungin yung binilhan nyo kung anong gaano kainit niluto yung fresh milk. Kung sasagutin po kayo ng 72 o kaya 75, pwede pa po siya magamit. Pero kung mas mataas na po yung temperature na ginamit, Uh, more or less, wala na po kayong makukuhang curd or pangit yung quality ng curd na makukuha. So, uh, you have to ask uh, ang source ng gatas what temperature they used to cook the milk. And eventually naman po, kung hindi kayo sagutin, subukan nyo. Pag sinubukan nyo siya, umubra yung rennet dun sa ginamit yung gatas, pwede siyang gamitin. Pag hindi po nag-curd yun, hindi siya nabuo, Ibig sabihin, naluto na siya ng mataas na temperatura, hindi na siya pwedeng gamitin. Oh, thank you very much. It's a very practical answer to the question. Another question from an anonymous attendee. Ang tinitukoy niyo po ba na raw milk ay hindi pa napapasturize? Opo, kinorek ko po yan sa post-test. <laughs> raw, milk is, uh, raw milk ay hilaw, hindi luto. Uh, which is also the same with the unpasteurized. Uh, siya ay yung gatas na freshly ay kagagaling lang sa dede ng hayop. Wala pang ginagawang heating treatment dun sa gatas. Siguro po ano, ito, um, si Ira Grace Floro. So ilan nga daw, daw pong araw tumatagal bago masira ang kesong puti? Normally, labing apat na araw po. And another one from Guadalupe Arienda. Sir, hello. Pwede po ba makuha ang contact number ninyo? At saka email address ninyo. Sabi mo kasi kanina, single kayo. Kala mo to. Just joking. <laughs> Interested po kasi ako sa paggawa ng cheddar cheese at cheese spread. So pwede ba daw ibigay ang inyong number or email address, Sir Angelo? Sige po. I may, ano na lang siguro, ma'am. Yung lang yung broadcast ko dito. <laughs> Mawa na na lang. Uh, they could inquire dun sa ating... Uh, Facebook page? Yeah, or pwede rin po i-email sa amin sa dtretraining sa gmail.com at maya po. Okay. Any other inquiries po, uh, you could direct it on our contact numbers or contact details for D3. Sasagutin po namin ang inyong mga inquiries pa. Yes po. The next one, from the same person, paano po namin malalaman ang grade ng gatas? Sige po. Piling ko ang tanong dito ay paano malalaman ang kalidad ng gatas. Uh, isang simpleng test na pwede niyong magawa sa gatas ay clot on boiling tests. Um, <clears throat> maglagay lang po kayo ng isang konting gatas sa isang, uh, sa isang lagayan. Tapos yung lagayan na yon ay pakukuluin nyo ng limang minuto. Pagkatapos pakuluin ng limang minuto, kung walang nangyaring kakaiba o hindi nagbago yung itsura ng gatas, maganda yung kalidad ng gatas. Kapag nagkameron ng buo-buo yung gatas pagkatapos pakuluan, ang ibig sabihin po ay pangit na yung kalidad. Malapit na po siyang mapanes, so dapat hindi na siya ikukonsumo sa kahit anong form. So ang pinakasimple po ay clot on boiling tests. Pakuluan niyo yung gatas sa isang lagayan for 5 minutes. Pag may nangyaring kakaiba dun sa gatas o nagbago ang anyo, uh, pangit na yung kalidad ng gatas. 
Okay, Sir Angelo, may mga questions pa rin po tayo about packaging. So would you like to repeat yung sinabi niyo po kanina with regards to packaging ng kesong puti? Maigsi lang po. Apa, wala namang limitation sa packaging. You have to consider less contamination. Siyempre, design. You have to consider uh, to, uh, you have to consider it attractive to your consumers. Pero first thing you have to consider is less contamination. Thank you very much. Is there a process to increase shelf life or additives to increase shelf life? I personally do not advocate using additives, but there are available ones in the market. Uh, preservatives which could increase the shelf life. I haven't tried though, pero meron yang available sa market. Increasing shelf life, you can increase the salt content, or you have to be careful in the processing to avoid contamination. Okay, thank you po. Hindi ba daw po delikado ang raw milk? Ang handling po ng raw milk, yes. Um, delikado depende sa source. Pero do not taste uh, raw milk. Huwag niyo pong titikman ng raw. Kaya nga po sa Pilipinas, hindi pa rin pinapayagan ang paggagawa ng keso galing sa gatas na hilaw. Kailangan sila lahat ay luto. So when you handle your raw, make sure you do not touch or even taste. You have to touch for testing. But do not taste the raw milk. Kailangan maluto muna siya. Okay, Sir Angelo, normally, magkano po ang kesong puti sa market? D3 is selling at 65. But that price is way too low compared to the commercial market. When when I make a costing, let's say for five liters that we've done today, uh, just making estimations, my break-even price here, uh, this is our situation here in Laguna and with the pricing, my break-even price is around uh, 60 pesos or 58.4 pesos. Uh, kasi po, ang ginamit ko lang na presyo ng gatas ng baka ay 35 pesos. So, magkakameron na tayo ng variability kung saan ang inyong source at depende kung magkano yung source. Pero, when I do the computation here, if I am selling at a 20% profit, my final price should be around 70 to 75 pesos. And I think, um, mag-increase na tayo, no? Nang to 70? Hindi ko pa po na-apply. <laughs> I think it's still at 65. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So, kung nais po ninyong bumili ng kesong puti ng D3, available po. Uh, Mag-fill up lang po kayo ng form every Saturday and Sunday. Uh, Nagpo-post po ang ating um, staff po from D3. Uh, yeah, sorry. <laughs> Your 75 is for the cow. Makapagalitan ako ng mga taga-kalabaw, mas mahal talaga ang sa kalabaw. Kasi mas mahal ang raw milk ng kalabaw. So wag niyo i-compare na pag kesong puti siyang kalabaw, ang sabi ko ay 75, wag po. Mas mahal po talaga ang kalabaw na kesong puti. Okay, thank you Sir Angelo. Another one from an anonymous attendee. Hello Sir Angelo, you're studying making cheese. Can you recommend some preservatives aside from salt to extend the shelf life of the kesong puti? So medyo na-touch mo na po kanina, na-answer mo na po kanina. So pwede niyo pong ulitin mo. As what I've said, I really do not advocate one. I haven't tried them. Pero ayoko, I would want to, to, to maintain the freshness of which just adding basic ingredients. So, pero uh, you could find some in the market. If you're doing it, you can try. Okay, thank you, sir. Hello. Another one, kung naka-vac yung packaging po, pwede po ba i-autoclave or pressure cooker? Di po ba mag-cost ng protein denaturization? If if you do vacuum packaging, um, when we make cheese, first, your, your cheese is already denatured protein. Now, when you do the vacuum packaging, nothing happens to the protein. If you do now autoclaving, that's a very high heat with pressure. Definitely, masisira pa lalo yung proteina kasama ang sugars. Malulusaw at masusunog po ang... Uh, malulusaw at masusunog yung keso when you do um, autoclaving. 
So do not autoclave your pros your your uh, kesong pute. Because my assumption is you would want to make sure that your kesong pute is really clean. Pero hindi na po. After maging keso na siya, uh, you have to to lessen contamination, but not resorting to autoclaving. Masisira po ang keso. Okay, thank you, Sir Angelo. Um, meron po ba kayong IEC materials sa DT? Um, sige, sagutin ko po. Party po. Ano ho? Meron po tayong brochure on how to make kesong puti. I think it's still available with the Office of the Vice Chancellor for Research and Extension. Kayo, Sir Angelo, in your office po, meron po kayo? Pero wala pa ako na <laughs> Okay, so anyway, um, ayun lang yung, yung mga luma natin na na flyers for for basic processing. Yeah. And um yun nga po um kung nais niyo po maka-avail ng kesong puti, ng brochure po, meron available po sa Office of the Vice Chancellor for Research and Extension. Okay? So anyway, um later on ipo-post po namin sa website itong brochure na ito. Another one from Guadalupe Arienda. Tama po ba na ang kesong puti is called mozzarella cheese? Hindi po. Ang mozzarella po ay iba po pong klase ng keso. Uh, we call it a, uh, they call it a pista filata. Um, the, the stretchy cheese. Hindi po sa kesong puti. Ang kesong puti kasi minsan may tendency siya na mag na, na mag uh, na mag-stretch, lalo na pag ino oven na siya. Pero hindi po pareho si kesong puti at si mozzarella. Okay, thank you po. And this next question was already answered about additives and shelf life. Na-answer na po siya kanina. Ano po? So, next one. Ilang days po ang shelf life ng kesong puti kung room temperature lang? Ang gatas po ay pwedeng mapanes ng room temp ng 4 hours. So, ganun din po ang treatment natin sa kesong puti. Baka po hindi umabot ng maghapon, ay baka mapanis na rin po ang kesong puti. Right after processing, eh, right after packaging, ay you have to put the kesong puti under refrigerated temperature. Even when you travel or when you distribute the kesong puti, kesong puti should still be not really refrigerated, pero pwede siguro naka-ice chest, tapos malamig pa din yung kesong puti. And the next question was already answered about um, raw milk. Ano po? Next one, ang shelf life po ba ay in room temperature or refrigerated? Refrigerated. Okay. Ayan. Ito, may nagtatanong na po about um, our products. Saan po mabibili ang fresh milk and magkano po? Um, sa setup po ngayon ni D, kung D3 po ito, uh, naka-online order po ngayon si D3. And then pick up points during Thursdays and Fridays. Ang fresh milk po namin ngayon ay 100 pesos. Ang flavored, specifically choco, ay 115. Pero if you would want to find some in your area, kung malayo po kayo sa Laguna, kasi Los Banyos lang po ang delivery ni D3, uh, you could find uh, dairy zones on specific area, then eventually you could find one. If you would want to determine dairy zones, uh, you could visit the website of the National Dairy Authority and the Philippine Carabao Center. I believe they do have the list of the cooperatives all over the country in which you could get a raw milk or processed, processed milk. <clears throat> okay, thank you, Sir Angelo. What type of salt ang pwedeng gamitin? Iodized or rock salt? I use rock salt somehow naging part ng bitter taste si iodized. So for the cheeses, I always use the rock salt. Ito yung mga mabibili lang sa market. Tama po ba, Sir Angel? Yes, po. Uh, just regular rock salt. Another one from an anonymous attendee. May changes po ba sa shelf life kung ilagay sa freezer ang kesong puti? Uh, when you put now your kesong puti in the freezer, definitely mas mahaba ang buhay. But I do not recommend putting kesong puti in the freezer because it will change the texture of the kesong puti. 
once nag-freeze na siya, uh, magkaka-ice crystals na yung, magkikristallize na yung mga watery part, eventually sisirain na yung smooth uh, texture ng kesong puti. So we do not put a kesong puti in the freezer. Just around 2 to 4 degrees Celsius. How about pagka hindi refrigerated? Gano daw po tatagal ang kesong puti if not refrigerated? As what I've said earlier, kahit maghapon, kung hindi nyo na-ref, pwede po siyang mapanis. In terms of nutritional content, ano po ang mas masustansya? Ang, ang nagmula po ba sa kalabaw or baka? <laughs> ang malaking kaibahan po ng dalawa ulit ay karamihan ng taba. Mas malaki ang taba ng kalabaw kesa sa baka. Kung gagawin siyang keso, ganun din ang suma. Mas madaming taba yung keso ng kalabaw kesa dun sa baka. In terms of uh, nutritional, um, how do you call it, preference or suitability, it again depends on your consumer. Kung wala namang limitations si consumer, you could eat the high fat one. If there would be some limitations, you could eat the high fat but of low amount or you would prefer the low fat with, uh, with uh, greater amounts. So when, when, when you market this one uh, and you are using both uh, sources of milk, uh, you have to explain to your consumers the degree of fatness or calorie content of one. Mas mataas yung sa kalabaw, mas medyo mababa yung sa baka. Pero ang kesong puti po, kung galing siya sa baka, ay meron na siyang 10 to 15% na fat content. So I would expect if it's from the Carabao, it would have around 15 or even 25, no, 15 to 20 percent. Okay, another one. Uh -huh. Hello, sir. Ask ko lang po kung anong right term na ginagamit ng mga cheese processors for coagulated milk. Cheese milk po ba? Uh, thank you po and keep safe. Sa post-test ko ulit yan. No? <laughs> Ang cheese milk po ay gatas na hilaw which is already intended for cheese making. So cheese milk ang tawag natin doon. Kapag naglagay na ako ng rennet, nabuo na siya na parang tokwa, ang tawag na doon ay coagulated milk, coagulum, or curd. Pwede siyang gamitin tatlo. And um, nakakabili po ba ng raw milk sa D3? As of the moment, we do not sell raw milk. We only sell uh, finished products. Okay. I think this next question was answered already. Um, pwede daw i-auto flavor pressure cooker. So we'll proceed to the next one. At ko lang ma'am, kung talagang kasi I am, I am really stressing on less contamination after. Uh, one method also, kung talaga meron kayong auto flavor pressure cooker, the packaging material you're using can be autoclave. Yung packaging material lang po. Bago nyo gamitin, pwede siyang autoclave. You just have to make sure that the material is autoclavable. It could resist a very high temperature and pressure. Pwede nyo pong gamitin yon. Even the materials you're using, uh, the cheesecloth, kung gusto nyo ng tray na, ang perforated tray na plastic, huwag nyo i-autoclave, matutunaw siya. Ang gagamitin nyo, kung gusto nyo talang i-autoclave, ay yung mga stainless steel na perforated trays. All materials that you could autoclave before and after making cheese, pwede nyo siyang i-autoclave. Pero wag nyo pong i-autoclave yung produkto na. Well, thank you so much for that um, clarification, Sir Angelo. Um, pwede ko bang bumili ng raw milk? Na-answer na po yan. Sa ngayon po ay hindi pa po nagbibenta ng raw. Finished lang. Okay, I think um, si J. Mark, Ian, Kandoy, so nahuli daw siya sa pagpasok, so tinatanong niya po. Siguro preference niyo, um, Sir Angelo, kung, kung masarap at magandang gamitin para sa kesong puti, sa kalabaw ba, or kambing, or baka? <laughs> Ulit po. <laughs> Ayoko po mag- Ayoko sagupin yung personal ta. <laughs> Ulit. Depende po ulit sa target consumer. But uh, those three types of milk is suitable for cheese. It depends now on your target consumer again. Yeah. Kung ano yung gusto nilang lasa. 
pero silang lahat ay magiging keso. Ayan. So narinig niyo po, so pwede po ang baka, ang kambing at sa kalabaw. Kailan po bubuka, magbubukas ang D3 store sa UPLP, Sir Anglo? I cannot <laughs> answer that. Pero I think as long as we are on a quarantine period, uh, the system of distributing the product is via delivery, online order and delivery system. Uh, just I think. Okay, another one. Balik po tayo dun sa kesong puti, ano po? <laughs> Pwede po ba i-press during draining process? <clears throat> um, uh, no po. Uh, you just allow it to, to drain itself. Pag prenes nyo po kasi yon, masisira yung texture nung 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 coagulum nung kesong puti. Ah, uh, wag niyo rin pong pipisain. May mga keso kasi na pinipisa. It's either pipigain mo lang siya from the cheese cloth, you have your cottage cheese. Pero when you do that, if it's kesong puti, you do not apply pressure while draining. You just allow it to drain kasi ang habol mo na texture ay medyo malambot. So you just allow it to drain. Kung ang objective mo naman ay ibang klase ng keso, uh, yung matitigas, talagang pinapabigatan siya para tanggalin lahat ng, ng maraming whey or tubig dun sa keso. But for this one, we do not press. Okay. Salamat po. Um, so, Angelo, are you willing to conduct another seminar daw po uh, regarding other types of cheeses like processed cheese? Um, Miss Mel, ikaw yung, <laughs> ikaw yung may target, hindi ko alam. <laughs> we, we, are, we are designing one, Miss Mel, tama? Yeah. For, yes. But for the basic processing. Mm -hmm. Pero if you have a chance, pag nagbukas na ulit kami ng live, actual, so you have to do it uh, on actual, uh, actual processing so that you can taste uh, what you are processing. But eventually, may may offer po. Yes. Tagdagan ko lang po, ano po uh, may mga pinaplano po ang D3 na mga courses po online. So abangan nyo lang po. So that's why you have to like our Facebook page para ma-update po kayo sa aming mga courses na yung offer online. Okay po. Next one, from John Michael America. Can we use the off-the-shelf fresh milk to make white cheese? Ulit ma'am, sorry na wala po ako. Can we use the off-the-shelf fresh milk to make white cheese? No po. I would assume the off-shelf milk is the UHT one. Ultra high temperature. Uh, we can't use that one because that has been heated for at a very high temperature. So which is not suitable for making cheese. How about the branded fresh milk from grocery? From the grocery daw po. Pwede daw po gamitin. It would still be the same. It's a ultra high temperature milk, a very high one, uh, a very high heat during cooking. You cannot use it for queso. You really have to use raw milk. If you are buying, if you cannot buy raw and you're just offered with a fresh one, you have to ask uh, the seller what temperature has been used. So yung UHT, ano po? Apo, uh, pag UHT, hindi po pwede. Hindi pwede. Okay. Another one, may paraan po ba para hindi po kapitan ng amoy agad ang kesong puti? Pag po gumagawa po kayo ng kesong puti, uh, make sure na ang environment ay walang kakaibang amoy. Kasi po, uh, dumidikit ang amoy ng environment kung ano man ang ginagawa mo pag nagkikeso na siya. And then when you drain it, kung ilalagay mo man siya sa ref when you drain, make sure wala ding strong smell yung inyong refrigerator. Kung amoy sibuyas po yung ref nyo, mag-aamoy sibuyas po yung kesong puti. So you have to make sure uh, you have a clear environment when you are processing one. Okay, thank you. Another one from Guadalupe Arienda again. Pwede po ba ilagay sa sterilized bottle ang kesong puti? Medyo maliit. Pwede naman po kung kaya niyong pagkasyahin yung coagulum na doon sa loob ng keso. Pero kung isipin niyo po ay yung 
karerenet pa lang, hindi po pwede kasi kailangan siyang madrain. Pero kung coagulum na siya, maififit nyo yung kesong puti dun sa sterilized bottle, pwede naman po. Okay, Pero ulit, baka mali yung intindi ko, you do not sterilize the bottle with the cheese. You just sterilize the bottle. After sterilization, you put the cheese. Yan. Okay. Salamat po, Sir Angelo. And another one, how about... UV light sterilization. Can we sterilize a cheese while in package? Pwede naman po. May mga ibang gumagamit ng uh, UV sterilizations. It's either you sterilize, pero usually ang in-sterilize po talaga yung material. Yung keso po, hindi po. But you could try. And we have here another question from YouTube. Yung ibang questions po from YouTube na answer na po kanina rin ho. Um, what is the technology to prolong its shelf life? Again, um, ang first available talaga ay preservatives. Pero I don't want to use preservatives. That one you could explore. Um, contamination first. See less in contamination. Okay, I guess this is the last one. Okay. Yung fresh milk po ng bitri, pwede po ba gamitin to make white cheese? Anong temperature po ang gina ginamit doon? I guess yung process na po na, ano, na fresh milk. Kung sa pagkakaalam ko pa rin kung yun ang ginagamit, we are pasteurizing at 75 degrees Celsius. So you could use uh, the D3 fresh milk to make kesong puti. Mm -hmm. Okay, ito. <laughs> Nag-pop out na, na naman itong question. So again, siguro kailangan pong ulitin kung ano po, di po ba delikado yung cheese if raw milk ang ginamit. Yan, nasagot na po kanina, pero can you please um, answer po? Ang ginagamit po natin unang material ay raw. Pero kasama po sa proseso ay pagluluto. So kailangan, kung gagamit ka man ng raw, uh, laging nasa proseso ang pagluluto gamit ang init. Hindi po pwedeng gamitin ang raw milk diretso sa keso nang hindi siya niluluto. Hindi po delikado ang raw kung lulutuin naman siya. Ang delikado pag kinonsumo mo diretso yung raw. Okay. So, um, I guess that's it. And maraming maraming salamat po, Sir Angelo, at sa lahat Thank ng mga nagtanong okay, for participating. Sana po ay sa inyo lahat po, nakatulong po, um, nakatulong po kami sa aspetong ito. Now, moving on to leave us with some words of inspiration. Isa na naman pong guwapo at makisig na expert sa larangan ng agrikultura ang kasama natin ngayong araw. So friends, ladies, and gentlemen, please welcome the Director of the Dairy Training and Research Institute, Dr. Amado A. Angles. Sir Dong? Hi, Mel. Uh, magandang umaga po sa inyong lahat. At alam ko po si Sir Angelo, uh, parang may nagtanong naman ko, binat, single ba si Sir Angelo or hindi? Pinata po si Sir Angelo. Pwede namang i-message yung kanyang telephone number at contact na. Ang, ang D3 po, uh, ang Daily Training Research Institute, uh, kasama po ng College of Agricultural Food Science, ay nagpapasalamat po sa una-una sa lahat ng dumalo ngayong araw na to. Uh, umasa po kayo na Marami pa pong susunod na mga kaparehong mga training. No? Ito po ay maikilang but on a regular basis ang, ang D3 po ay nagsimula na na mag-conduct ng mga courses na tumatagal ng tatlo hanggang limang araw. So uh, maganda po na i-message nyo kami kung ano po yung mga pangangailangan nyo. Especially po yung mga farmer natin na walang mapagdala ng gata sa ngayon. Uh, to some extent, ang D3 nakakatulong sa na, na binibili po namin yung ilang raw milk ginagawa namin gatas uh, bilang karagdagan dun sa aming gatas na napuproduce dito sa, sa UPLP. Uh, uh, exciting po ang industriya ng pagatasan. Uh, marami pong opportunity no, na nag-iintay sa atin uh, para tayo ay uh, kumita no, sa larangan ng paggagatas. 
mula po sa pag-aalaga ng pagatasing baka hanggang sa pagpaproseso at pagbibenta ng mga produkto na nagaling dito ay uh, malaki po yung potensyal no, na tayo ay magkaroon ng alternative source of income especially po ngayon sa panahon na ito. No? Uh, at uh, um, pasasalamat din po sa CAPS Extension Committee sa pag, uh, pagbigay ng opportunity sa sa D3 no para mag-present at uh, ma-extend natin yung mga technologies na matagal na pong meron sa atin no na kailangan kailangan po sa panahon ngayon. Sa amin pong dekano din na uh, agbisit uh, uh, manatili po kayong malusog no at ang inyong Exicom uh, ang mga kawani po namin sa D3 maraming salamat po uh, sila po ay pumapasok araw-araw pumapasok baka at uh, yung aming mga tao sa processing plant ay ganun din. So sa lahat po ng kawani ng UPLP, uh, ng CAPS, uh, sa lahat po ng nagsidalo ngayong araw na to, mag-ingat po tayong lahat. At uh, again, paki-message nyo po kami sa aming Facebook page para po ma alam, malaman namin kung ano yung mga kailangan nyo sa training. At uh, we are more than uh, uh, willing to impart no, kung ano man po yung mga teknolohiya na naandito sa UPLP at uh, maipahitid namin ng uh, 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 ma sa inyo no para sa kap kapakinabangan ng ating mga uh, ng ating mga maliliit na negosyante at ng ating mga dairy farmers. So Mel, salamat uh, uh, Prof uh, Tapia at kay Dean, the rest of the Cup Sexy Company. Good morning po. Thank you so much, Sir Dong. Yan po ang aming director, the director of the Dairy Training and Research Institute. And now, I would like to take this opportunity to promote the Dairy Training and Research Institute, aka D3, DTRI. Yan po, D3 po ang tawag po sa amin. You may visit our website at d3.cavs.uplb.edu.ph. Yan. And um, also, you may like our Facebook page if you wish to get notifications regarding our dairy products, our services, and our trainings. You may also contact D3 through our temporary office number. Dahil nga po nasunog ang administration building ng D3, ito po muna ang number na pwede ninyong gamitin para makontak kami. And if you have further questions, please send us an email. Yan, yan po yung aming email address. Again, for your certificate of attendance, your certificate of attendance will be sent to your email after you answer the evaluation and post-test form. For those who pre-registered for this webinar, make sure lang po na sasagutan po ninyo ang post-test dahil ito po ang magiging basis para sa inyong certificate of participation. For those of you watching on Zoom, please find the link sa chat box and isend rin po sa inyo ito dahil nagpre-register po kayo. Those on Facebook and YouTube, kindly email us at d3trainings at gmail.com para masend po namin sa inyo ang link ng evaluation and post test. And of course, please subscribe to the College of Agriculture and Food Science YouTube channel. So before you go, I would like to leave, I, I would like to leave you something from success.com. Ang sabi doon, don't wait for opportunity, go, create it. This is Mel Tokabe, and on behalf of the Dairy Training and Research Institute and the UPLB College of Agriculture and Food Science, mabuhay po tayong lahat. God bless everyone. Bye. Thank you.